Today, we're putting another mead myth to the test. We're testing the theory that fermenting mead in direct sunlight will lead to problems with that brew. Let's put this theory to the test. So this theory is pretty simple. We know that letting your beer ferment in direct sunlight is bad because of how hops react to light. Here's a direct quote from Mark Dredge about this topic. He says, beer contains hops. It also contains sulfur. Hops contain alpha acids. When hops are boiled, the alpha acids get isomerized and then become isohumulone. When light hits the isohumulone compounds, it breaks them down and causes a reaction with the sulfur in the beer and produces some of that same stinky chemicals that skunks spray. Hence the term skunked beer. I'll link the whole article below if you wanna read more, but that's the main proponent there. Now here's the thing. Most mead doesn't have any component of hops or alpha acid in it normally, so this shouldn't be an issue, right? Well, people have taken the general idea that sunlight hurts beer and applied it to mead without really considering what goes into each. They then have taken that theory and spread it around the internet and world so that people now believe it's bad to ferment their mead in sunlight. There are lots of people who have argued about this without testing it, so I wanted to test it. This test started with mixing up a batch of must, which is the slang term for our honey and water mixture in a mead, and splitting that into two batches. We then took and pitched our yeast, which was the Lauven BM 4x4, and added two grams into each container. You'll notice I had to upgrade to the larger three gallon carboys because I didn't have a medium sized vessel at that moment, and my uh, tilt hydrometers didn't really fit in a one gallon carboy. We're using the tilt hydrometers to help us track the fermentation speed, gravity, and the temperatures of these fermentations. We took both of those containers and put them in a windowsill to start fermenting. We only wanted one of them to be exposed to sunlight, so we wrapped a blanket around one of them and let the other sunbathe. I am aware that sunlight might lead to a higher fermentation temperature. That's why we're using the tilt hydrometers to track that. We let those start fermenting and immediately ran into an issue. When I added my Fermate O at the 24 hour mark, it really threw off the tilt hydrometer's gravity readings. Those readings became pretty much unusable after this point. However, the temperature reading still worked, so that's fine with me. Both brews took about 25 days to ferment. We then took and racked them into new containers. I continued to let the uncovered version sit in a lit area and kept the covered version in a dark area. They both sat and aged for an extra two months. Both finished fermentation at 1.000, so they are dry and they will stay this way for the test. Let's talk about the temperature ranges. I have taken the tilt information from each and put them side by side so you can see the readings. There are a few moments where the uncovered one got about four degrees Fahrenheit hotter than the covered one. Overall, the average temperature for the uncovered was 72.9 degrees Fahrenheit for the duration of its fermentation. The covered had an average of 71.7 degrees Fahrenheit for its total duration. I am very aware that fermentation and temperature are very important there could be minor things that we see because of the temperature fluctuations and differences here. These are not huge gaps between them, and I'm curious to see what the tastings will tell us. So I got my good friend BC from Doing the Most to come over and do a three-part triangle test with me to see if we could identify the difference of each brew. I assigned one of the brews to be an A and the other to be a B. In round one, there are two A's and one B. In round two, there are two B's and one A, and the final round has two A's and one B. We are gonna attempt to find the odd man out and talk about what differences we might notice in these brews. Let's hop into the tasting. All right, we're here for the tasting. I've got BC, doing the most. You've seen him on the channel a lot. Um, maybe, maybe not as much recently. I feel like <laughs> we go through phases where you're on the channel, like, yeah. Yeah, like like five videos in a row, and then we People go. People like, get tired of me. You know? <laughs> I don't think I, that's I bring what's big happening. energy. I don't know if that's what's happening, but that's something. Um, he is gonna help me with this tasting. So I've already you've already seen the process of this video and what's happening, and I've briefly explained how this works. But essentially, this is just a what happens when you ferment it in sunlight, sunlight or no sunlight, and the big myth that a big no no that you should not ferment in the summer. Yeah, because it'll make it taste bad. Yeah, we're gonna find out today. <laughs> we're doing a triangle test, three rounds of a triangle test. So we have right here, I have two A's and one B. Essentially, we are gonna taste test these, and then our goal, your goal, is to identify B. And we'll talk about 
And B is, is I, the bad one? No, this is, theoretically, if there's a difference between them, B will be different than A. Okay, so my goal is to identify which one is not like the others. Yes. Okay, I got that. That's So that's kind of our goal. If, if <laughs> there's a difference, we should be able to identify and say this is the got one. It. If there's no difference at all, then we'll be wrong. Right on. <laughs> so okay. we're just going to do some tasting, uh, probably zoom ahead, and then maybe come back and talk about it. So here's round one of this triangle test. Okay. All right, start tasting. Maybe it's my a placebo effect, but I feel like one of these is more viscous. Interesting. Or well, has a bigger body. I don't know though. That could just be a. You pick that up from any of them? I, if flavor wise, I'm not catching it. Maybe much. I'm kind of feeling like this one might be thicker. I feel like I'm getting bitter from these two. Okay. And so I'm going to pull that one as my. Okay, so this is your. I was going to say, I feel like these two, you think you're getting a bitter side? I don't know about bitter. Yeah, like not astringent, but like bitter. Like there is a slight layer of like acetone to this guy. Could be that. And I don't know. There's yeah. I don't notice they all taste the same. But this one to me has a thicker body. So okay. these are my theoretical A's, or I don't know. I'm gonna say A's because I know there's two A's and one B. So okay. where we correct was round number one. This was an A. This was an A as well. Yep, A and a B. A and a B. Yep. Okay. okay, well, round one, um, we were not right. <laughs> Let's try again. Sorry if I smell. You can use that, I guess. Yeah. I, I forgot <laughs> Just we were, that'll we're, be my, we're recording. That'll be, that'll be my uh, in-between. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna mix around a little bit. Okay. Really confuse myself. Uh, da, 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 da. We can't, by the way, we can't see the bottom of these. Yeah, so. Yeah. you've like done black Sharpie. Oh, I've doubled down. Two layers of tape. I mean, it's... Yeah. Only the best. Only. Th <laughs> let's let's go. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> Round two. I haven't tasted these yet, but I'm actually feeling that I might have been able to do it by smell. Oh. So I'm okay. gonna taste them. I'm gonna double check. Okay. I'm, I'm going by taste, not by smell. I think that these two have a similar taste, and it's. Only slightly different than this. Okay. <laughs> so, again, it could all be a placebo, but let's see if we're right. By the way, there are two Bs this time, so this should be an A. A. Oh, my, I was, uh, I was wrong. And two Bs. You, you got it this time. So, okay. should I tell you what I think I noticed? What did, yes, please do. There is an estery smell. Okay. That I could pick up in these two, but not in this one that smells like it got too hot or it, okay. got, or it got too stressed. Right. Some, something, something happened in that, regard. that created an ester and I could smell it on these. Now, I couldn't really taste the difference between the three, but I, the, these two smelled the same to me. All right, well, we're gonna put you to the test one more time. I know, it's exciting. So here we go. Let's round, see if I can do it by smell again. Round two, fail on my side. <laughs> You got it right. <laughs> that was good. I, see if I can I'm gonna use again. your technique this time though. I'm gonna try my yeah. best. To, Just gonna... it's like a, it's like a stale, um, warm kind of smell. Okay. Not like a like a wet cardboard or anything. Like it's like a warm, stale, like a hot cabin kind of smell. <laughs> okay. That's all, all right. I got. Okay. It's hard to describe. Well, here's round three. Let's see if you can go two for three and me maybe one for three. Okay. I can't, okay, so based off the smell, mm. I do understand. I do, this one to me has a little bit of that profile, has a little bit of the, a, uh, I, could, I feel like I do smell a little bit of that ester, mm -hmm. what you're talking about. These two smell the same to me. And then this one does have a little bit, I feel like of a stressed yeast side. Like okay. It could be heat, could be whatever. What was your? B. So this should be a two A's. Yep. Okay. Hey, I also got this one. Okay, I went one for three. You went two for three. Mm -hmm. So let's let's break this down a little bit. Your big thing you noted about B, which I gotta make sure I'm right. A is covered. B is uncovered. Okay, so B was the one exposed to light. B is exposed to light. Yes. A was not exposed to light. What did you notice about about B? I noticed that there is an estery funk that I cannot taste, 
they all taste the same. Yes. But it, I can, I can smell it, and I can smell it better the second time around. I wish I would have focused more on aroma the first yeah. round, because the second round when I noticed it, it was like, okay, that might be a thing I can look for. Right. And that helped me identify. And so it's just like a hot, warm, not or not hot, like warm, like wood and carpet kind of. Okay. Yeah. I said like a cabin, but yeah. it's like a, like, like when a room gets too hot, it's yeah. got that kind of smell to it. I guess you were talking about, I definitely, uh, I, you know, I, I feel like it has a, I don't want to say a uh, subtle sour because I don't think that's the right term. That's where my brain is. No, I mean, it might be a similar thing to what folks smell in like Brett, that like barnyardy oh, yeah. kind of, but it's not quite that. It's more mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> residential. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is very yeah, woody. No, but they do taste the same. That's what's mm -hmm. what's they, tricky. They taste the same. Is we are only figuring this out by smell, mm -hmm. not by taste. Because I think mm -hmm. if we went totally by taste, I I wouldn't have got it for mm -hmm. sure. Well, and you know, I don't know how old these are, but you know, esters a lot of times will break down with age. Yeah. So I would I hate to say this, but I would be interested a year or two from now yeah. to see. These are two and a half months old at if this they point. if they level out right. Right, and you know, I'm the god stuff to hold back. I can do it. That's it's possible, but I think the the, the bare bones argument here is that it is. Most people will say it is terrible. Like if you do this, you're gonna ruin your mead. Mm. I wouldn't say that B being uncovered has been ruined, um, and I, you know, you'll see the the temperature ranges and charts in tandem because I did log them in tandem, and I don't recall vividly if B had a greater swing or anything, but. I think it does play a little bit into the fermentation, but mm -hmm. is not so detrimental that you shouldn't, like, if you left your carboy out in a sunny area, that you should just call it yeah. done. And it's not even necessarily a bad smell. No. It's just a different smell. Right. And in certain things, I mean, especially if you had something that was, like, buckwheat heavy or something, you might not even notice. Right. I don't know. I, this has been fun, though. And um, I would mm -hmm. love to know what people think down below if they've noted something. I know you've done stuff before in direct sunlight and yeah. heat and just, and um, obviously your test there wasn't an AB, you know, so there wasn't a, a control, so yeah. to speak. But yeah. you didn't notice anything insane that would say, drank it all. Yeah, <laughs> it's still gone. So, <laughs> but uh, if you want to check out Do the Most, he also does a lot of home brewing. I was voted the most scientific mead channel on the internet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. Seriously. <laughs> Amongst many other awards we might add to that. Um, so if you want to go and check him out, his stuff will be below. You can also check out Doing the Most Brewing. Um, he's on YouTube and Instagram and all the other places. But, yeah, go check him out. And thanks for being a part of this. Absolutely. This was fun. I haven't done a test like this in a while. So this yeah, and I'm fun. glad we were able to, like, through the process, deduce what we were looking for. Yeah. That was yeah. kind of cool. So... Yeah, go make some more mead. Maybe ferment in the sun. See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.